All right. Um, good morning, everyone, and welcome to this week's edition of uh, Boundaries Webinar Wednesdays. Uh, my name is Hashei Shimbore, and I will be taking you through uh, using uh, PTC MathCAD uh, Prime 3.1 for uh, mechanical engineering applications. All right. So just a quick um, agenda for the day. Um, we're going to start off uh, with a quick introduction on boundary systems, um, and then we'll go on just a very, very brief uh, historical overview of MathCAD. Um, we'll look at some of the challenges in engineering calculation um, and see some of the features in MathCAD that help mechanical engineers uh, calculate and document uh, engineering IP much quicker and better. Uh, and then we'll go into a software demonstration um, and finally, we will uh, address one of the case studies uh, in which this has been has been used. Uh, all right. So, quick note on boundary systems. Uh, boundary Systems is a uh, product development consulting company based out of Cleveland, Ohio, uh, but really has a presence and a footprint uh, all across the North American continent. Um, and we specialize in everything from uh, CAD data management, uh, uh, product lifecycle management, um, also CAD design and consulting, and, uh, and simulation as well. And so really, anywhere in that product development uh, uh, cycle, uh, we have the tools to help our customers uh, reach uh, uh, bigger and better levels of success. OK, um, so quick note on MathCAD uh, historically. So MathCAD is a. Uh, uh, calculation and documentation platform that uh, was initially started by MathSoft um, many, many years ago and eventually was acquired by PTC. Um, and for over 20 years, MathCAD has been you know, the leading uh, solution for engineering calculation. Uh, so just a, just a small sampling here of, of many of the major customers and players that are currently using MathCAD. Um, you have something as simple as, you know, more than 90% of the uh, uh, Fortune 100 companies uh, are using MathCAD. Um, and you have, you know, um, hundreds of thousands of, of users all over the world uh, currently that use MathCAD as well. Um, so when it comes to, you know, engineering calculation and documentation, MathCAD is really a well-established player in the field. All right, um, so currently today, whenever you have you know, a case where you're trying to capture some engineering knowledge or IP, um, how is that typically done? You either have you know, uh, many different repositories. So you either have you know, reference manuals or you know, uh, spreadsheets with you know, Excel data in them or tables. Um, you could have Word documents with you know reports in there, um, or or just as simple as you know pen and paper calculators. Uh, sorry, pen and paper scribbles, and also you know running calculations in a calculator, and then you know writing the results. But yet, um, how you got to that result is not traceable because the calculator in, in information is you know is uh, is volatile. Um, and so what that then means is. Uh, it's very, very hard to trace the uh, inf flow of information um, uh, because of all the different repositories. And then not only that, uh, more often than not, what you end up finding is uh, it's, that makes it more difficult to reuse the data. Uh, and so when you're not reusing the data, you're then you know, reinventing the wheel for new projects, which is basically just burning time and money down the drain. Um, and then the other... The other Achilles heel to this particular process is um, whenever you want to bring new resources up to speed, um, it takes you know significant time to um, find all the different you know data sources they need and present it to them in the correct order that's comprehensible in order for them to you know start uh, understanding your design process, which you know takes a while and um, and again is 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 one of the uh, the, the, the drawbacks to this particular kind of uh, engineering knowledge capture approach. Uh, now, even with one of the major um, uh, softwares that's currently being used for something similar to this, um, uh, it's, uh, what's it called? Microsoft Excel. 
Um, Excel is, is decent. Um, it, it's good in what it does. Uh, it was built as an accounting platform or accounting software. And for that, it's, it's good. Um, but it's anywhere beyond that, it, it starts to break down pretty easily. Uh, first off, you'll notice uh, with, with um, Excel, um, sure, it has a live calculation, um, but it's extremely difficult to read um, uh, any formula in, Mac, uh, sorry, in Excel. Um, not only that, but uh, it's, when it comes to readability, it's, it's very, very difficult. Uh, you know, something as simple as being able to put a subscript or a superscript, you know, um, it's not as convenient in, in, uh, in Excel to do. Um, and, it, and also when it comes to, you know, uh, engineering calculations, uh, like, you know, calculus or differential equations or things like that, um, math, uh, Excel has no support for that whatsoever. So, you know, if you wanted to get the uh, internal rate of return of, a, of an income stream like an accountant would, yes, you can use Excel to do that. Um, if you wanted to calculate the integral um, of, uh, of a particular equation, um, Excel, you know, Excel couldn't help you with that uh, um, as easily. Now, the other, the, the other big drawback to Excel, and, uh, and uh, this is a study that was done recently, uh, mentioned that... Uh, 94% of all spreadsheets uh, have errors in them. Uh, so again, 94%. So that would mean um, every, you know, that there's a very, very good chance almost all spreadsheets, you know, have errors in them. And so wouldn't it be wonderful if you had a, you know, software that would, you know, warn you or prevent you from adding, you know, um, pounds force to degrees or from adding time to a length value um, or from, you know, conversion or unit conversion errors. Um, uh, for example, with, with Excel, you know, it's very easy to type in here, I don't know, cell B35 plus, you know, B48 or plus, you know, B46. And Excel is going to give me a value. Excel is going to say, oh, your new value is, you know, 863.569, whatever, whatever. Uh, but in reality, I just added, you know, uh, unit in degrees with pounds force, and Excel doesn't care. It'll give me a number, but in the engineering world, that's impossible. And so the ability to start, you know, tracking our units uh, um, and also error-proofing our, our calculations is something that actually is very important. Another drawback to Excel is uh, whenever you have spreadsheets, you know, your, a typical equation in a spreadsheet would look something like the top over here, where um, it's almost like, you know, computer code that you, that's pretty incomprehensible. Um, and in fact, I can, I'll, I'll bet, you know, uh, 10 bucks to any webinar attendee who in the, you know, 30 seconds we have to look at this, this slide will figure out what that Excel spreadsheet equation says. Uh, more often than not, when you're, you know, auditing someone else's Excel spreadsheet and you come across something like that, um, what do you do? You grab a piece, and pa piece of paper and you spend 10 minutes trying to figure out what it's saying, right? Or to make it even, even better, um, you know, if you create your own Excel spreadsheet with a formula like that and then, you know, three months later, you come back and review the same spreadsheet that you created, odds are you end up recreating the spreadsheet because that jargon right there at the top is incomprehensible. Um, with MathCAD, that's not what it, that's not the case. With MathCAD, it's basically like, you know, real math. It's almost like you're typing real math, you know, or writing real math with your hands. Uh, and so it makes your equations way more readable, much more easier to, to, to see. Um, and that improves comprehension. Uh, now, again, you know, if the goal is to record engineering knowledge and then transfer that, um, uh, Excel does not do a good job at it compared to MathCAD and the ability to format things in a way that makes comprehension uh, much, much easier. All right, so just a couple of, uh, of quick features or benefits of MathCAD. So we just talked about some of the drawbacks to, to how you currently do uh, engineering calculations and uh, documentation currently. Well, some of the highlights of MathCAD are, first off, uh, the units management feature. And this is something that has always set MathCAD apart from its competition, uh, the ability for MathCAD to conveniently convert between units and also 
um, error check your uh, calculations to make sure that you're combining the right units in the right way. Um, so, for example, it's something as simple as MathCAD will prevent you from adding, um, you know, a length with, you know, a velocity unit, as you see in the bottom right corner there. Um, it basically warns you and says, hey, these units are incompatible. Um, so simple things like that would, you know, definitely help in, in making sure that your calculations are, are, uh, are correct. Um, And so really the benefit here then is that you're saving, you know, a lot of time because MathCAD is automatically doing the troubleshooting and the conversion for you. Um, and it makes your engineering calculations much more easier and also more accurate as well. Um, and, and usually for, you know, for people that, that, you know, don't think units management is, is, a, is a key feature to be highlighted, um, you know, just something as simple as the Mars rover that, that I think NASA sent over to Mars, you know, um, I want to say about 10 years or so ago, and um, it ended up, you know, burning up in the Martian atmosphere during, during entry because someone somewhere did their units conversion wrong, and so the, 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 the rover entered the atmosphere with much higher velocities than it should have. Um, and so, I mean, and that's, you know, a multi-billion dollar, you know, entity like NASA. So... Um, units conversion in engineering is an issue that still has to be tackled, and MathCAD helps you do that. The next is uh, word processing and formatting. Um, and so with MathCAD, the ability to, you know, uh, conveniently have areas where you, you have, you know, text that describes uh, uh, your, your document or have reports, and also combine that with, you know, um, equations and math, and also graphs as well, um, and, and, you know, images, uh, um, tables, all in one worksheet means that uh, you can very, very easily uh, capture your engineering IP and data all in one, one simple and easy-to-use repository. Um, and so a, a good example I like to talk about regarding this here, um, one of the customers that we had that, that switched to MathCAD, um, he mentioned that they use, you know, um, uh, Excel for storing data in tables, uh, and they use Microsoft Word for, you know, typing out their 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 um, word processing for for their engineering reports, uh, and then they use another software. I want to say it was LaTeX uh, uh, to generate graphs, or I think it was GNU Plot, one of the two. Um, and all those three things they could do in MathCAD, um, and so. Basically, MathCAD is now one application replacing, you know, three different uh, um, uh, use cases or three different applications, and that's the benefit of of, the, of MathCAD being flexible enough to incorporate all of those different kinds of data uh, together. And then finally, uh, with MathCAD, what you also get uh, is the natural math notation. Um, and, uh, and with math and with this, it, it dramatically improves comprehension because, again, you're not dealing with, you know, B12 plus E19 minus D, D8 sack by battleship. Uh, no, you're, you're looking at, you know, real live equations, almost like you would write them out by hand, um, uh, which in dramatically increases comprehension uh, um, and, and makes, you know, knowledge capture and transfer that much more easier. Now... I just I mentioned these three over here. MathCAD has many, many, many more features and bells and whistles uh, that that are important for for the uh, average mechanical engineer. Uh, something as simple as having you know over 600 different you know built-in engineering and calculation functions. Um, uh, that's also a huge feature as well. We just highlighted these three just to start with here, so that way you don't you know um, uh, have death by PowerPoint. Now I will. Um, I'll pause the uh, PowerPoint here and then switch to uh, a demonstration of the software. All right, so this is MathCAD currently. And um, what we're going to do here is a couple of things. You'll notice, first off, it looks uh, just like the typical uh, office interface. So um, looks like your typical Excel or Word interface where you have your you know different tabs and within those tabs you have your commands. So it's a very familiar user interface to what you're already used to working with. Um, 
But now, not only that, we can start to interact with it in just as sim seamless of a way as you would typically interact with other applications you're used to. So, for example, when it comes to, you know, editing text, um, it's just as simple as if you were working on this in, you know, Microsoft Word. Right? Um, you could also move over here to say, okay, well, um, currently we want to... Um, you know, we want to describe in this case um, what this worksheet is about. Actually, before I do this here, I'll walk you through the worksheet. This worksheet is uh, to calculate um, the max deflection um, in, a, in a simply supported beam uh, at a certain distance uh, and, and the given load that's applied on the beam. Uh, and so in order to quickly convey what we're trying to, you know, to get at in this particular worksheet, we're just going to insert um, a, uh, a picture or a screenshot that uh, has our, that, that has some information on it already. So that way it just makes for easier comprehension. And we'll just go ahead and do that. And in all of a couple of clicks, we can, you know, insert a, a screenshot here that dramatically improves comprehension. And uh, you'll notice MathCat is smart enough to, un to uh, retain all of that information together. Next, we'll go over here and, um, and add a different function here. Um, now, I mentioned earlier, MathCAD, you know, uh, uh, comes with over 600 different uh, uh, pre-built functions. This is everything from, you know, uh, data analysis functions to, you know, uh, curves, uh, curve fitting and smoothing. If you have, you know, uh, data you're trying to, to fit with, uh, with, with coefficients. Um, also, you know, you can run, you know, design of experiments. You know, you have um, functions for solving, you know, differential equations over here. Um, uh, st doing statistics as well, and also reading and writing information to many different kinds of files. Um, and so there are really over 600 different functions uh, uh, that you have in MathCAD, which makes you know working in this again a one-stop shop because I can run all my calculations as well, you know, right from here. Now. In some cases, you know, uh, customers already have, um, you know, data uh, in Excel uh, spreadsheets or, or, or worksheets sitting there already, which is fine. Um, I can, you can still leverage the same data. Uh, all we do is put in a, you know, a read Excel function. And now we can tell MathCAD, hey, let's go look for a particular Excel worksheet. Uh, we'll say this one, Elastic Modulus. And uh, let me expand this here. All right. And um, it's as simple as saying, OK, let's pick from um, 15 over here to 16, right there. Let's insert those, uh, those cells into, into MathCAD, and let's assign that. Um, now, what, what happens right here is MathCAD then creates a live link between the data and the Excel, uh, between the MathCAD worksheet and the Excel data. Uh, and so now if I query it for the uh, information, it comes out and tells me, hey, um, you know, this is the information you, you, know, you should have. And when I say live link, uh, it's dynamic. And so if I go ahead and update this and say, hey, instead of just A15 to to C16, let's pull in, you know, uh, one more row of information. Um, you'll notice it updates uh, immediately. Right. Um, now, so in this case, if we then want to go ahead and say, okay, well, let's um, let's go ahead and and assign uh, what's it called? aluminum to our beam in this case. It's as simple as specifying the data and saying um, that's going to be and we'll just go ahead and, and pick our units in this case and say that's going to be gigapascals and so 69 gigapascals and um, yeah there we go. All right, and then the next part of this is we're going to scroll down and, uh, and 
and continue with the rest of the uh, of the worksheet over here. Um, and so we'll say, for example, oh, sorry about that. Okay. Yeah. So we'll continue with the rest of the worksheet over here. So we'll say, for example, uh, let's uh, get rid of this here. I'll get rid of my placeholder, and we'll just say, you know, uh, my length is going to be 15 meters. Um, the load in this case is going to be um, 500 newtons. And uh, the load position where we want to calculate the, uh, uh, the max deflection at is in this case going to be um, what's it called? 11 meters along that, uh, that beam. And so we'll go ahead and continue scrolling through this here. This is where MathCAD now starts calculating all the all the different equations we already defined for it here. Um, and so you can start to you know calculate the force balance and the you know uh, shear and the moment and all of that. And um, and uh, looks like we're missing one uh, moment of inertia here. Actually, you know what? I'll just flip to um, um, yeah, I'll just flip to a different worksheet where we already have this everything completed, just so that way we can we can show what the end result is. Um, yeah, and you'll notice in this case um, that uh, so yeah, we have our uh, load, we have our our position over here. And uh, we'll scroll through this here and eventually get to where we calculate the deflection. And the deflection at uh, um, our area of interest, in this case, right in the middle where we have the max deflection, our deflection right there is uh, 13.12 uh, um, millimeters. Now, you can then see, now it's very easy to use because uh, one of the other things is, you know, you can create documentation and then have it as a standard that other people can reuse in the company for different designs. And so in this case, we could say, well, let's come back here. Right here, we have a 500 Newton load. What if that was going to be an 800 Newton load? Um, MathCAD runs the calculations live in front of you. Um, and so really, all you have to do is, uh, is scroll down over here and uh, and take a look and see, oh, OK, with an 800 Newton load, this is what my new deflection is going to be. Um, and so it makes it very, very easy to have a document that already exists in place. And all we're doing is, you know, inputting new data and seeing what our result is. Now, some of the other um, uh, bells and whistles you'll have in MathCAD that, that is uh, beneficial for um, mechanical engineers is, first off, I mentioned you have, you know, pre-built functions, uh, over 600 of them in, in MathCAD. But not only that, MathCat, you can also define your own functions. And so this is a case where we're saying, hey, you know, um, we want y of x to be equal to, you know, all of this right here. Uh, you know what all the other symbols are except for x. Um, and now, math, now it understands that this is a function. And so when we ask it for y at a particular location, it, it can evaluate that and give us a result. And so again, you're not limited to um, a specific um, functions, but you can also define your own as well. And then and not only that, but uh, you can also then take those functions and say you can if you want to derive it symbolically, you can do that. MathCAD has a very, very powerful symbolics engine behind the scenes where you can start to you know derive things symbolically and then substitute numbers. Um, yeah, if that's if that's what floats your boat, you can do that as well. You can have derivatives in this case. Um, it's a dy dx over here. Um, I'll go ahead and collapse this region here, and you can also have, you know, again, graphs um, and plots of, you know, in this case, this is a shear uh, across the across the whole length. Um, you can, and then not only that, but um, I'll just scroll down here and, uh, and highlight one last piece to this here. 
Yep. With MathCAD, you also have the ability to use um, uh, solve blocks as well. Um, and so this is a case where you have, you know, pre-built functions, again, that you can have it, you know, automatically calculate specific values. Um, so, for example, in this particular case, what we're telling it here um, is, to, is to generate the minimum dimensions uh, of, a, of a beam with a rectangular cross-section um, and... Uh, what we also want is, you know, to get the minimum moment of inertia that doesn't deflect the beam by more than three millimeters in the process. And you can run those calculations and minimize all of that, and MathCAD gives you the minimum dimensions you need uh, to not deflect the beam more than three millimeters and still maximize your moment of inertia. So again, this is one of those things where if you have, you know, systems of simultaneous equations, in this case, this is two equations we're solving together, um, or, or, yeah, or whatever it is, you know, you have equation-wise, uh, the ability to use all these pre-built functions in a solve block, uh, which is proprietary to MathCAD, all of these are, you know, uh, some of the additional bells and whistles that make it much easier for a mechanical engineer to run your calculations in MathCAD and document it in a very, very easy to comprehend and use format. All right. So we'll switch to this here and um, scroll over here to the top and we'll go ahead and, um, and take a look at this here as well. Now in this particular example, this is a case where we're designing uh, uh, disc clutches and so this is uh, from the automotive industry. And in this case, we know um, what our coefficient of friction is and we know uh, for, you know, uh, uh, cast iron or hard steel, we know what our max pressure should be. Uh, and based on that, we can then design for a particular input torque. And say, for example, in this case, you know, our input torque um, is going to be 430. Um, and in this case, it's 430 newton meters. Um, and based on that, 430 newton meters, we can then come in here and uh, calculate uh, how, many disc, uh, uh, how many discs we need to have in that, uh, in that clutch assembly. And so we have our calculations here. We can define integrals for MathCAD to, to, to run through. Um, and eventually, MathCAD comes out and says, hey, you know, for 430 newton meters of, uh, of torque, this is how many, how, how many disks or how many plates you need. Now, one of the beauties of this, then, is uh, we can very quickly and easily then start to query this. So... Um, Let's say, what if we want to design something for, you know, 800 uh, newton meters of torque? It's as simple as changing the value and then scrolling down, and now, you know, it updates with a with a new result. So this now is a is a spreadsheet or a template that can be reused, you know. Um, infinitely over and over and over across many many designs because uh, again it's as simple as you know changing a number and, and, and reading what the what the end result will be um, apologize for that let me uh, flip back to flip back to mathcad here um, all right and the, um, Last worksheet I'll highlight over here uh, is a case where we're, we're designing um, uh, what's it called um, a transmission, and we're trying to size the shafts that are going to be transmitting the torque uh, based on the load that they're seeing um, in, 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 in bending and torsion. And so, in this case here, this just has a quick screenshot of you know what we're trying to do. You know, we have you know the shaft over here coming in, and that then couples you know and, and leads to the to the uh, torque going out. Sorry. And, uh, yeah, it's as simple as defining your input parameters and all, all of your uh, equations and relations, um, specifying what your input horsepower is going to be and what your allowable stress is for your, for your um, material, and then run the calculations. And now this runs through and then tells you over at the end, um, in this particular case, that, um, let's see here, Yeah, and then this runs through and tells you at the end, you know, what your outer diameter should be, D1, at the bottom, and then what your um, um, 
Actually, no, 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 your inner di your outer diameter is D0 at 1.38, and your inner diameter should be 1.3 in order to fully calculate, um, you know, what's going on, or in order to fully accommodate for your torque. And once again, it's as simple as, you know, going up here and saying, okay, well, right here we have, you know, 100 uh, horsepower of torque. What if you were designing this for, you know, 3,000? Uh, let's do that. Uh, or actually, no, nah, I'll just make it simpler and say 250. Um, let's just be um, Yeah. And you'll notice that dynamically updates to specify, okay, a new value for your inner diameter. So that means we increase the torque. Now it increases the the uh, difference there between, you know, my outer and inner diameter. So that way our, our shaft can, can withstand more torque. Um, also, the other beauty about MathCAD is you'll notice um, when, as you scroll up and down the entire document, it's uh, formatted into a typical graph paper-like document with page breaks. Um, and so one of the cool things about this is uh, MathCAD is, you know, um, basically as you see it, uh, that's exactly how it, uh, how it um, uh, will print. And so, you know, if you have a case where you want to print this out to something else, um, yeah, it's as simple as, or I guess print this out to either a PDF or, 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 or a piece of paper, um, what you see is what you get. Exactly what you saw in the MathCAD worksheet is exactly what's going to be printed to paper. Okay. All right, so we'll uh, flip back to the PowerPoint and um, and just run through a quick case study here. And so this is uh, this was, uh, was done by NASA. Um, and, and in their case, what they wanted to do was uh, to uh, actually have a typo in the in the spreadsheet in the PowerPoint. It should say active. Um, but what they wanted to do was to perform some uh, active vibration control calculations uh, on the space station. So basically, um, on the space station, they, they have a case where they, they have some experiments that they want to run in uh, zero gravity. Um, and because of the location of the space station, you have times when there will be fluctuations in the amount of g-force it's, ex it's experiencing. Very, very small, minute microgravity you know, fluctuations, but even those um, are still significant for the experiments, and they want to dampen that out. Uh, well, they were going to design um, an active vibration control system, so that way, with every uh, g-force it, it sees or recognizes, it applies a counter or opposing force. Um, to, to, to combat that, to make sure that it's basically zero Gs within the experiment chamber. Um, and for them, um, the, the, the way they had it was to basically position many different accelerometers uh, in the entire uh, um, system. And based on the data from the accelerometers, um, it, would, um, it would feed that you know, uh, um, to a, a MathCAD worksheet that would run the calculations and then determine what the correct you know, input or output force would be in order to counterbalance the, uh, uh, the vibrations that they're experiencing. And so that eventually resulted in the uh, active, act, active rack isolation system um, that, that uh, is currently on the space station right now. Uh, so again, this is one of the uh, um, simple but yet very poignant examples of cases where you know, mechanical engineers are currently still using MathCAD um, to you know, either document or run engineering calculations in their everyday uh, work. All right, so that uh, concludes our, our webinar on uh, using MathCAD for uh, mechanical engineering applications. Um, if you have any other technical questions, uh, you can email me. My email address is on the screen right there. And um, for any sales questions or pricing or things like that, uh, you can email Sean Moreau, uh, who, whose email is at the bottom as well. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, we look forward to seeing you uh, next, week's, uh, next week's webinar.